Most Lewis light machine guns were manufactured in 303 British for use, of course, by the British Army. But Savage in Utica, New York made guns for the British, but they also made them for the United States Army, the United States Navy, and of course, the U.S. Marine Corps. When America entered World War I in spring of 1917, they were woefully short of machine guns of any type. For a light machine gun, they'd given up on the Benet Mercy Model 1909 machine rifle. And at this time, the Lewis gun was doing great work in the hands of the British Army on the Western Front. Now, the Lewis had been invented years before by Colonel Isaac Newton Lewis, who was a U.S. ordnance officer who had invented any number of uh, weapons developments in the 1890s and early 1900s. And he based this Lewis gun design on the McLean machine gun, which had also shared this top-mounted uh, pan drum. You know, Lewis brought to bear a lot of technical knowledge and, and, and looked at the whole project in a way that guys like Browning may not have. The Lewis gun was, in some respects, mechanically pretty complicated and pretty unusual. Uh, a clock spring was wound up by the movement of the operating rod that then uh, sent the operating rod back forward to chamber a cartridge uh, for the next shot. And of course, the pan itself uh, was mechanically linked to the movement of the action. So this was not uh, this was not as simple a gun as we think of in today's context of a gas-operated um, uh, self-loading design. The American Lewises were all made by Savage. The first Savage Lewis guns procured by the United States Army were not in 30 6 They were in, surprisingly, British 303. And some of those guns were among the ones that accompanied General Pershing when he went down into Mexico on the punitive expedition after, after Pancho Villa. Uh, very few of them. Uh, I've seen one or two. Uh, all the subsequent guns were made in 30 caliber, and that required going from 303 to 30 6 required uh, quite a few dimensional changes in the gun. And they were done kind of on the run. And the 30 6 guns were beautifully finished and, and marvelously uh, fitted. Um, uh, really much, much nicer looking than the BSA uh, 303 guns were made in England. Uh, but they didn't work as well because the gun had originally been dimensioned uh, pretty much for 303. And uh, if you look internally at those guns, there's a lot of very complex machining that has to be done to make them. It's a, it's a marvel that any of the Lewis guns worked as well as they did because it takes a high level of craftsmanship uh, to make them. During the early years of the First World War, there were not many options in terms of a light machine gun. In fact, really all that was out there was the brilliantly made Model 1915 French Chocha. The other big option that was available and on the block at the time was the Lewis gun. The Lewis light machine gun, which is air-cooled, despite the fact that it looks like it has a big water jacket, it is an air-cooled machine gun feeding from the 47-round Pi-10 magazine that mounts on top of the weapon. The Lewis gun is the weapon that everyone should have rushed toward because it was an effective design, although it was a little bit heavier than the Shosha. It was nevertheless an effective design. 
and it's being used by the British early in the war and the 303 caliber. Eventually, the United States government is attracted to the design, and eventually it is placed in production at Savage Arms in 30 caliber, meaning that there's a British Lewis and then also an American Lewis. One of the enduring things about U.S. Navy uh, Lewis guns, and the U.S. Navy was the principal recipient of ground pattern Lewis guns in the United States, uh, was that the butt plate would be covered with patent numbers. Colonel Isaac Lewis uh, offered the uh, War Department uh, his design free of any royalty uh, out of, out of, sure, out of, out of patriotism. Uh, his offer was, was rejected uh, shamefully uh, by General Crozier, the chief of ordnance. But Lewis expected to make his money selling the gun overseas to foreign customers. Uh, and as a consequence, it was thoroughly patented. So the Savage made American Lewis gun in 30 out six, or 30 US caliber, goes to France with the Marines. They use them in training, but before they go into the front lines, uh, the guns are taken away from them. Uh, number one, you only have one brigade of Marines within a U.S. division, and that U.S. division is only one division of many uh, at the front. And so it's a logistical nightmare to try and support Lewis guns for just one brigade. And meanwhile, there was a need for these guns to be modified and then used on, on aircraft. However, the Lewis guns stay with the Marine Corps into the 1919-1920 CACO revolt in Haiti. He used a great effect there. And then later in Nicaragua from 1927 up to 19, into the mid-1930s in anti-bandit uh, warfare in the bush of Nicaragua. Uh, the Marines are still using these at uh, Corregidor and the Navy still has them on several of the landing craft that were coming into Guadalcanal as late as 1942. In a moment that many people aren't aware of, in September of 1942, a U.S. Coast Guardsman by the name of Douglas Munro is wielding an American Lewis in 30 caliber as he is guiding a series of Higgins boats, small boats, landing craft, in evacuating um, Marines of the 7th Marine Regiment near Point Cruz on Guadalcanal. And as he's maneuvering his boat into position and his boat is laying down effective uh, grazing and suppressing fire using the Lewis light machine gun, Munro is ultimately struck by a Japanese bullet and killed and is subsequently awarded the Medal of Honor for that action. It is the only Medal of Honor awarded to a United States Coast Guardsman and the American Lewis gun was a part of the action. Of course, the Lewis Light machine gun is well a machine gun, so it's subject to the National Firearms Act. They're out there, but they're pretty pricey. 